Okay. Now, let's see here. All right, folks, here we are. Yet another Inner Sphere Convolation matchup between Waffle House, Aces Wild, and Furia. Uh, both teams have uh, actually done fairly well in this uh, season. Um, although, uh, slight. Um, uh, Disappointment from Fiora, perhaps, uh, in this uh, current round with um, two uh, wins and three losses, while Waffle House uh, managed to beat their opposition three and two for the losses. There, we have um, a couple uh, pilots to look out for. Uh, on the Waffle House side, Kawaii Chibara uh, with 4.7 match score per tonnage. Das uh, with 81 assists. The Orphanator with 56 component destruction. While on the Furious side, we have Varel 29. 5.1 match score, 63 assists, and from Frio, we have uh, 49 uh, component destruction as well. Okay, and let's uh, take a look at the mechs that they've uh, brought so far. Looks like the Bushwhacker X1 for Waffle House. Uh, a mech to watch out for and 0.5 damage per ton but in the same type of chassis except a different variant we have the bushwhacker uh, Papa 2 with 4741 total damage and for the blackjack tree for Deferia has been performing quite exceptionally for them with 11.6 damage per ton and Deferia has used the Assassin 21 quite quite strong with 4.4 thousand total damage there 24k but 4470 actual numbers and do we have um let's see here uh we have team one with a uh, total tonnage of 490 95 oh it's still uh trying to uh <laughs> still strategizing Indeed. let's just leave it and with that. We have two uh, pilots missing on Furious side, interesting enough. And let's take a quick look at the map strat, shall we? We have three points contested Epsilon, Data, and Kappa. These are the main three points. Oh! Uh, I think this is the wrong map. Yeah, Canyon. We're doing Canyon, 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 Canyon Solaris, Solaris, and then Grim. Oh. I see Grim Plexus. Uh, cap, so I guess that's my fault. Should be clicked well, on no drop way. one, but yeah. No worries. Uh, at least it's, uh, uh, we've cleared out that issue there. But drop one, we have, uh, quite, uh, interesting uh, situation developed and oh have um interesting enough we have your sense from CSPS is this uh is he on their list there I, I'm not sure uh 
What? Oh, okay. Kuro sense? That's cool. He, he was on your list at the beginning of the season. Can't change teams after you mm, play for them, but I it see. looks like he's switching to CS. But uh, next we season. have uh, quite a number of the familiar faces on area. And uh, it looks like uh, we're still uh, waiting on uh, the locking from Team 1. And they're still quite the over the tonnage. Here. And uh, also, Waffle House has recently uh, acquired Unbreakable as uh, their new addition to their pilots. What do you have to say about, about that, Texan? All I can really say about Unbreakables, from what I know about him, is casted like a couple of the EU games which I'm thankful for but mm. really no, this is their first, I haven't his seen first uh, time for the last matchup but still oh it looks like uh team one is uh almost ready let's uh verify okay and now it's up to team two right, they have confirmed they are locked and it looks like a uh, uh, Bravo Charlie on both sides. Interesting. Uh, looks like Team One favors Charlie a little bit more, but uh, we'll see. Ready to? Oh, we need to ask Team Two. I'm just waiting for them to say lock. Okay, looks like they are locked and ready. They go. <laughs> oh, what's going on? Oops. Yeah. Bold, refreshing, brisk. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm just no, that was. Uh, what do you mean? What's going on? Oh, Twitch did a thing, and I forgot to mute my stream first. Uh, mute the stream earlier. I was uh, just uh, replaying some of the stuff uh, to uh, improve on, but uh, still loading here. All right, we're finally in. And we have a bit of a waiting time, mostly because uh, we do have Fury, which is from the EU. Um... <laughs> oh, there we go. And looks oh, like now we have killing. the pilots getting in. I am at red team with uh, Fury. Looks like uh, we have. Um, oh, slightly heavy drop, a Bushwhacker X1, an Annihilator 2 Alpha, uh, Assassin 21, a Trebuchet 7 Mary, a Wolfhound 2, and another Assassin 21. How about your side, Texan? Oh, uh, we have Sek uh, Cicada from Kawaii Chimera, which is one of his favorite mechs I've heard. And we have some really Chad Victor 981s mm -hmm. with two UAC 10s with one UAC 20. So they're ready to de deploy the 80 freaking alpha double tap if RNG doesn't entirely eliminate their firepower in the first double tap, which has happened to a lot of great players. And it looks like the Trebuchets, MRMs. Oh! Wait! Whoops. Oh, we messed up. Um, we messed up. Texan. Ah. Ah. Uh. Sorry about that, folks. Uh. Ah, uh, my I fault too. I totally missed else it. Don't corrected me in the lobby. I put on 20 minutes, I got Canyon Network, I put on the tonnage limit, that was uh, just very unprofessional yeah, for me, don't <laughs> be like me. Hmm. 
I've done it once before too, so it's not only you. <laughs> yeah, a lot of co-casts, <laughs> a lot of casters have fell to this same trap. Uh, at least we have a nice little death scene from Furia. They're going into the canyon desert. Yep. All right, let's try to just get this redrop as fast as we can. Sorry about that, everyone in Twitch chat. To yeah, be fair, it's sorry. midnight over here. Not the most uh, you, you ideal not uh, time. Completely Plus, uh, I mean, I just casted another game earlier, so haha. I also had uh, sh I have share responsibility as well. All right, I don't have a free excuse. All right. But hey, it looks like our, uh, our co-casting images went well. Now let's fix that too, Conquest. Here we go. <laughs> Maybe. Crash? Oh no. Nope, Don't uh... call me technical difficulty. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay, they hold call a hold and that lasts for two minutes. Yes, it is. That is correct. At least I believe so. When I was looking at the rule book. Alright, let's just try to bounce out ideas. We unfortunately saw the drop decks of both teams pretty early on. But, but let's speculate yeah, about I'm... what we could possibly see for both yeah, sides. Yeah, we can mention that. From what uh, we saw earlier in the season. I can't see this. I know for firstly, I know that Fur Furia mm -hmm. has taken a lot of dragons in the past, even on Candy Network and Grim Flexes. So maybe we'll see a dragon rush in the. Oh, they're saying go at forty-five. The next round, possible. Okay, go. Okay, they're going at. All right. Now All let's right. Looks see like here. Going. Looks like red team. I think we mentioned it earlier. Wolfhound 2, Bushwhacker X1, Assassin 21 times 2, and um, Trebuchet 7M. Oh, is that Trebuchet? Mm-hmm. Merm Trebuchet. Alright, and it's the same deck it looks like out of mm -hmm. uh, Waffle House, I believe. The Chad yeah. Vickers preparing to nuke the enemy team. Mm -hmm. This is wild. It is taking a two cap, it looks like. No, uh, Orange oh is my, get he just contested, traded 26% so for get that. out of there um, really fast. Over extension, 30%. Oh my. It's 30%, you mean? 
And it looks like red team uh, managed a UAV. Blue team also throws up a UAV. The victors know that they cannot outrange the Annie, so they're just trying to stay on the mid to low ground, waiting and for what trading does, opportunities oh, against some of these closer like, uh, targets. But Maria has map control advantage here, but it looks like Ace Wilder pushing oh. in as fast as they can. Orange is getting all the freaking bait in the world. Oh, Game focused on by a bunch sense. of mechs. He down. still isn't going down, oh, but he's boy. all the way down 40. Oh, they're this switching targets. Looking Fez, good. Victor. Or Furia. Rip. Kuro. Sense. Oh. Now, Bavaria has two max in the red, and one of them goes down due to Frio. Oh, another one of Furia's max go down. Oh, they're trading max right and after one person like, uh... dies, another goes down on the other side. Oh, no. BZP is lagged, I think. And He's nope, not he was giving lagged. up. He wants to kill someone else. But unfortunately, now it's just Frio and his aunt. Oh, no in the back while everyone else is brawling out at extreme distances. He overheated. Hawaii. Oh, he boy. went down in his cicada. And... and wow, what a matchup. And this goes that to Furia. quite a push. An extreme brawl out of Ace's wild side. Waffle House. But it's just that uh, Annie with the Overwatch and the map control just really p punched it in there. The victors with the close range brawl. I, I like the build. It's very manly of them. Just, mm. it's very hard to deal with all that range Indeed. in the back. Especially and with like a 6 AC2 man. A uh, situation there. From the Annihilator, just shooting away at the junkyard. It's quite uh, it it became quite one one sided in near the middle there. Oh, and looking at some of these team stats, you can already you see the power of that Annihilator. In the back. All right, let's uh, bring up the uh, stats here. Give me a second here while I plug in the numbers for the for this uh, system to crunch it up. Okay. And that was a, a nice bra from a while. I think one of the things that we noticed was a, a heavy split focus in between the focus fire targets after those first four people went down in the bra. And so Kawhi got separated and went all the way to B5 and was fighting another MPL boat, I believe. And he got separated from the other brawler guys that got stuck in c5 fighting the annihilator and some of the other max let's take a look at the match score and damage oh boy all right freo with nine uh freo 19 with the annihilator 2a 779 damage general combo with 522 in that bushwhacker uh, bro, who uh, 253, Varel, 29, with, uh, 276, dead, P, 192, with the Assassin, 21, and Pure Sense, with 101 damage in the Wolfhound, 2, while on Ace's Wild Side, with, uh, Nairu, sorry, Nairo. 
up nigh door, sorry. Uh, <laughs> 222 damage from the Vulcan 5 Tango Kawaii Chimera with uh, 254 damage in the Cicada. The Orphanator with um, 276 with the Victor 9A1. Fez 21 with the Victor 981 once again, 187, Unbreakable with the Assassin 23, uh, 178, while Orange Dry in the Vulcan 5 Tango with 71 damage. Wow, that was um, quite, a, quite a show of force from Fury at that point, my goodness. And I have to update the score. That was indeed. Okay. Oh, well, let's look at the map like stretch, the shall we? You just crashed out lobby grip. All right. So just hope that they find their way back into the lobby. But the match was kind of. Not utilizing much of the map, really just these Delta 5 and Charlie 5 corners. They uh, Furia utilized the junkyard area where a lot uh, of Daka boats usually just One set second. up and uh, DPS and prepare for pushes. It looks like pushes, General Combo which... uh, is requesting us to yes? free uh, 3019 from his uh, body. He's crashed out, so uh, he they want to invite another player. Okay, let me. Okay. Okay, I'll I'll reinvite Frio, again. <laughs> With Baroni, sometimes it works, GI's sometimes it doesn't. OP. Just uh, just works, guys. It just works. <laughs> like Mass Effect and Drama, the Fallout seventy six Kappa. All right, and getting back to the map strat while we're waiting. Charlie 5 was utilized heavy by Furia when they set up Overwatch in the junkyard position and they just had a bunch of pokey proddy mechs just trying to challenge them to come outside and chase us. And that's what eventually what Ace Wall did with the victors and the assassins and the cicadas. Well, it was a quite a brawl it's just that when you're pushing a position like that with a brawl it's kind of easy to put down especially when you don't have something with range to deal with like the other high dps ballistic boats in the back but good on a swap for making it as close as they could it was just a uh, unoptimal scenario yeah the annihilator two way push from exactly. was uh the star at that point taking junkyard and just laying down the law basically with the ac2 and uh, i think he had a uh, large laser and some mediums on it too that was uh, quite a, a show of force there while the ac uh, ultra 20 uh from the victor I believe that the optimum range is around uh, 320, perhaps, or 300, 310, 320. I believe it's 310 yeah. for most weapons at 270 optimal, and if they get the full 15% range quirks, well, skills, that is. Well, we are just waiting. And unfortunately, a lot of technical issues yeah, are looks happening like, on uh, some of the players' ends. So we're just trying to bounce back hmm, ideas. So what do you think we'll see out of Rio this time now they're on Team 1? Uh, really dip You think they uh, will do just a mirror hmm. and prepare for another brawl? They might actually take the Echo 5 position since... Uh, They've uh, favored uh, the Annihilator strat. Um, 
But yeah, that, that position is pretty strong for a long range trade. Well, you have uh, possibly Jeremex crossing in from Echo Tree to Delta 4 if um, doing that sort of a split. But uh, it's, it's anyone's guess at this point. What have you seen uh, uh, or um, saw from the match that you would uh, think otherwise uh, from uh, Aces Wild instead of a brawl push, perhaps? Uh, we may see... I don't exactly know. They haven't really given anything with this deck. All they said that we're just going to take a close range high dps loadout and we're just gonna push you on one of the maps where mm. everyone just goes for overwatch deck so they may go for something cheesy in some of these other maps mm -hmm. that may not be the known meta oh he's restarting the pc my goodness this is My god, this is <laughs> extending. Oh, my microphone so long. is a bit loud. Sorry, guys. And. Oh, uh, it's. Are you sure? Because it's in a red zone, so that's usually when it's distorting. Jack. So, yeah. Oh, okay. No, we got a decent <laughs> amount of complaints about you being too quiet and I'm um, too loud. Yeah, uh, I fixed it earlier, but uh, I thought that uh, might be a uh, light, a little bit better this time. Well, let's see. Let's go back to uh, the matchup strat. Uh, it looks like they didn't use any of the mechs. Uh, from that uh, max to watch out list, so it's quite uh, interesting how uh, what will turn up in this uh, particular fight. Although I did notice that. Go ahead. Oh, I did see a bushwhacker oh, okay. from Furia's side, two LP tens and an MPL, but that was just one of them, I believe. Mm. Oh wait, no, that isn't on Furia's preferred Indeed. max. Indeed. Furia's preferred max and, is um, really Blackjack 3. It, it seemed like they stalled a bit with the Victor push. Uh, was I uh, imagining it? Uh, it looked like a stall or they were ready to try to reposition on the other side of the map, which is a possibility with a deck like that, I feel. All JJ capable max. Uh, let me ask. And both sides already said that they are locked. I uh, don't think I've seen it. Looks like Orphanator says they're locked for Team Two. Game one. Okay, looks like both teams are ready to go. And there's a interesting situation uh, here right. with team one with Alpha Charlie and team two with Bravo Charlie. Here we go. I just don't want to risk someone not being ready and then <laughs> you see something that it's incredibly potato. By accident, and not on purpose. Indeed. The accidental potatoes are always the worst. Income. A little bit of time loading up, because Fira is EU based. That's where you go. Here Let's we go. Let's just hope the PGS oh, wow. respond faster. On team or two side, we better. see a bunch of crabs here. 27 SLs times three. We have two. Uh, sorry. 
a crab 27 bravo and a crab 27 and a thanatos 5 papa what about your side texan Oh, uh, we have two DHC victors that spawned in Alpha Lands. And two Vindicators with MRMs. And either medium pulse or just machine guns and lasers. With two MPL oh, pseudo lights what are... the Wolfhound and the Vulcan. I don't think either team has scouted out each other yet. Oh, wait. Oh, no, and Hawaii these, scouted uh, out one wolf out these, on the um, other side. Indicators have interesting builds here. Yeah, MRMs. It's the... MRMs and, and the single LPL, MPL on one of them. MRM 40. Mm -hmm. And medium lasers with machine guns and... Yeah the the build of choice to take on it but it looks like aces wild aren't even going well, for the cap have, after they were uh, spotted three jump capable crabs but um that, that's a bit an odd combo there the, the, yeah the problem is they still have two mechs mm -hmm. that don't have jj's that could get stuck inside the valley oh no oh and the orange there. wall is just going in oh uh, he just mm. received he understands now there's and heavy it is, dots uh, in the taking field. a lot of damage uh... there's uh, strikes you, on just, Theta uh, got eight and percent hits from that no one it looks like you oh that could be possibly it as oh, well I thought that was the MPLs burning him Oh, Orange no, Dry just lost uh, an arm in his crustacean. Oh no. They're going for the crabbed torsos. They want the juiciest part of the mech. And it looks like damage, a big guys. brawl at Theta. Oh boy. Oh, and. The brawl is happening, and the counter flank from Furia with the Vulcans and. Looks like a, the Vindies. Oh my. The Vindies are on the counter flank. Why? Such a slow mech is on the counter flank. BZP like, went down they're, and they're that... just balling up together. Looks like. Well, Waffle oh, House no. is, did the complete Oof. rotato. The Thanatos goes down by the heavy the gun shot. Center. Absolutely devastating. Uh, I believe this. Um... If you. How many yeah, UAVs is all that? Of them. That's like <laughs> eight. This is a 2 to 8 game, guys. Gotta stop the point. <laughs> Two million seagulls worth of UAVs per match. It's uh, once again for uh, Furia's advantage here. Oh, I knew I was missing something. It's the score board sheet thing. Oh, yeah. rest in peace. Uh, just the score here. is two to zero right now. Uh, it's popping up. All right. Hopefully, you fix that quite soon. One. So we can. So we can soon get to the stats of this amazing yep. rotato uh, around the, the point by the crabs and the one thanatos. They're trying to bring the crab rush back mm. because apparently MS didn't crab that rush. That is quite unfortunate that. indeed. Unfortunate. Um, okay. Quickly look. Okay, now I will be switching the map to Solaris. And and actually be on Conquest, guys. I swear it's Conquest, not Assault. That's not a mistake that's going <laughs> to haunt me for the, the rest fine. of this matchup. Once you fix it, it's uh, not going to change anytime soon. <laughs> 
And let's bring up the match score here. And this damage scores here. And let's uh, take a quick look. Okay. Um. Oh wait. Okay. It looks like uh, looking at the um, Aces Wild side. Orphanator with the Thanatos 5 Papa doing 251 damage while the rest of the crabs the 27 SL 197 the crab 27 B 152 um, and the damage scores continue on at 166 72 and 93 while um for the furious side we have the vindicator 1x with 422 damage uh the victor 91 uh with 409 damage the vulcan 5 tango with 321 the wolfhound 200 and uh 41 general combo in the 1x with a 222 and the other um victor uh managed to scratch out 246 as well so uh damage numbers again seems to be uh sliding quite um uh quite uh well just a big old landslide i guess <laughs> For Furia again for this matchup. Oh boy. And let's switch to the tactics um strat there, sorry. Um Yeah, right. sure, please and do. Should I start from Furia side first or all right, so Furia deployed the double assault in Alpha Lance, which is not something you see often because a lot of other teams set up Overwatch with Charlie assaults and they just take control of the entire map. But what they did here was a decent response to the Brawl Rush, I believe. The two dual heavy gods victors just ran the Theta. But since the crab rush went all the way around, they had time to prepare and get themselves settled up there. While the the medium, the more medium-sized lances just came in from Charlie Lance, went around and rotated as the counter flank to get the easy back shots, with Vindicators even, and they just ended up killing a lot of people pretty fast, I would say. And Aces Wild just rotated through C5, D5, E5, and all the way through Echo 4 and rotated all the way around to like the Charlie 4 Delta 4 corner line. And then they even split up and went a bunch of different directions around that Theta cap point, hoping to kill someone, kill more people probably if possible, and just distract them. But. Furia just kept focus fire. Oh no! And well, it at looks least like um, team you know their team down. too, so uh, they can. Uh, they do have five minutes, uh, or so, uh, until well, if team uh, one says they're locked. Alright, 
team one says uh they are locked so we have five minutes for um team two to form up And we let's let's theory about theorize about Solaris City. What we've seen a lot on Solaris City are brawl rushes and some extraordinary Overwatch tactics. Like, like on Epsilon Point, you see people getting on the highest buildings possible. Maybe we'll see that out of with maybe like a late uh, ER large grasshopper possibly. <laughs> But I don't think they've run that mech a lot. So maybe Furrier will be the one going for a brawl rush. And maybe it'll be Waffle House that's going for an Overwatch deck. Or they both brawl, hmm. but well, one deck uh... is a little bit stronger than the other. Like one is LB40 Bukaki and MPLs versus like MPLs. Well, we've, and we'll uh, see which one has the much, most uh, damage used killing up the crabs potential. For... The um, Aces Wild side, so that is off the tables. Um, so hmm, this will be an interesting uh, situation for um, Aces Wild Waffle House to um, work with uh, what the mechs they have. Hmm. Yeah, it could be <laughs> an Uzi rush, guys. Watermelon rush. Just a, just perfect for oh. a, a hot day on Canon Network. Looks like uh, the game Maybe is Maybe not here okay. in Solar City where there's air conditioning. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, uh, they were both ready and I put a timer, basically. Both said they were locked and ready for action. On this very uh, big city map with majestic tones of negative FPS. <laughs> Good lunch, half fries, people. Yes. And it looks Primera like is definitely uh, American. we're on sure? drop uh, three here. And I'm at blue side. Looks like we have Vindicator 1X, two Assassin 21s, two, uh, two uh, Vindicator, uh, sorry, uh, Victors. 9 ones and one Vulcan 5 Tango. And what do you see on uh, Team side? Uh, I believe we have some good old LBX spam with medium pulse lasers with a single Flea 17 on. And. Uh, well, like a Flea 17 with a Vulcan. The... An SPL Flea. <laughs> Having and it trouble looks like, getting uh, around the map. The Victor 91s actually have uh, LBX 30. And it looks like BZP. Yeah, LBX spam. Oh my goodness, BZP. It's not going to be the does LB50. does have the LBX 50. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that thing is uh, lugging through the city block pretty slowly there. <laughs> yeah, but he has the ultimate Chad firepower. <laughs> Bigger guns we, means better life. See. Am I correct? Most Americans would agree. And it looks like uh, trading has really begun. It looks like, um... Oh, he's General not alone. combo here can be caught out here alone. Oh. If he falls down, he'll be in the middle of like four people. Oh, and he's getting caught out. Mm -hmm. But he's safely on top of a rooftop now. But oh my well, goodness. as I say safely, as he's getting pummeled all the way down to 67%. Rip. All, all he, he needs to happen is to get kill secured by that Vulcan or the flea. Um, 
With uh, the Vulcan as well. Oh no. And now the Vulcan is. Oh. This thing. Is this while it's not uh, following up? Oh, an orphanator just got his. Oh boy. His rear end destroyed by the LB 50 oh, Victor. Man. Now they are focusing him. Well, the, the Vulcan and the Bushwhacker trying to focus him alone. But it looks like a bunch of split up fights are happening out in the buildings. Oh no. Waffle House is getting taken down. They're not, uh. And all these small little skirmishes. Yeah. The team is so split up. Oh, my goodness. It looked like a uh, Waffle House they had could a do. advantage. But nope. It looks like, uh. Once again. Uh. It, it looks like Furia just and, had that much oh more my. raw DPS and what a match. Alpha. Whoever has the most guns in the brawl wins, I guess, Indeed. is the correct my goodness. choice. And that was a really fast brawl. I think that lasted like yeah and i really two thought minutes, that Aces, I think? uh wild had uh waffle house uh, had a, a clear advantage but uh it seems like uh it slipped away they got an early pick but mm -hmm. furia just rotated him out and let other people start tanking and then they were just like split up in half it looks like three of aces wild folks in the middle of the team so the other three is like right outside the enemy team and they got they're facing down lb50 victor which is something you don't want to do in like a light or a flea all right and unfortunately switch to the uh stats here All right, and I will All right. start switching the teams. And, you and just... let's yes. take a look here. And the score tells the tale. Looks like uh, your sense in that Assassin 21. Uh, 410 damage. Beryl with uh, uh, 451 from the, um, I believe it was the LBX 30. Victor with that. Um, Frio 19 with, uh, 144. Uh, Roku. Roku, I guess. Well, fortune that. Uh, with the Assassin 21. 388. Uh, general combo with that MRM Vindicator. Uh, 265. And Victor LB, uh, 50 there with 305 damage so he probably just shot six six times <laughs> with that my goodness those are that that six uh six times was uh devastating with uh two kills right then and there and uh looking at aces wild waffle house that's 21 with the attempt uh Carry there with the Bushwhacker X1, 336 damage. Orange Dry with the Marauder 3R. I haven't seen those uh, much in the tournament. Uh, 293 damage. Vulcan 5 Tango with uh, 221. 17 with uh, 195. And uh, Victor 981. Uh, not too sure what that. Uh, Waffle House was uh, piloting with that particular mech. Uh, catch that uh, Texan or uh, the 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 uh, Victor ninety one or piloted by Orphanator from Waffle House. I'm not entirely sure what he drove that round. What? Oh, okay. Uh, I just note that they had mostly an unbreakable victories. with uh, 43 damage in the um, Bushwhacker. 
Let's uh, switch to the map strat room. Okay. Okay, I'm going to launch it, but we'll discuss the map strat. All right, and we see uh, my attempt at drawing basically what happened. What happened was Furia set up a firing line with the victors and some of the other slower mechs, but like their vindicator with their assassin went onto the flank. Once they realized that Aces W was just holding, Aces Wall was holding a position to try to trade against them. And even though Aces Wall completely almost crippled that victor in a few seconds, not the victor, the Vindicator in a couple seconds. And uh, they just shared like armor the right after that happened. And it's wild even split up in the middle Let's, of their push. Uh, and it, yes, it's about here. to start. Let's Let's see. Switch. Um okay. On blue side, looks like uh we have a plethora of different mechs here. Looks like the Marauder Roger once again, the Vulcan 5 Tango, the Bushwhacker uh, P2, uh, the Fleet 17, and another Bushwhacker X1. Okay. And how about your side, Texan? Oh, we have a lot of guns on this side, the same Vindicator played last time but we also have an SPL locust you don't see that often oh but we have free on that LB40 annihilator I took one of those the other matchup against 228 does amazingly well in such and a SPL brawling environment against another brawl that is we also see a, S a LB10 oh, with 4 SRM6 roughneck let's see it's not an LB-20, but he wanted the most guns and engine, I guess. Alright, and it looks like it's wild we're going to take the Theta point since they haven't scouted out where the, the enemy's main force is. Mm -hmm. But they seem to be and converging on, onto Kappa. Hopefully, it's wild realize they can I just take they the do. two cap to force them to come mm -hmm. to them. And it looks like they're actually doing it. Now they just have Good to. Job. Uh... We have mm -hmm. Now the annihilator is probably gonna have to push somewhere, which is a terrible situation, I will say. Pushing looks the like annihilator. Uh, Fira, feels awful, uh, uh, no, uh, Aces Wild uh, didn't did, uh, completely cap data. Good. And uh, oh. And looks like the Locust uh, is uh, doing a scout there. They see him. They're shooting at him. Scouting? Oh, no. Oh, and he he got stuck on the building. Oh, no. They are ready, ready for him. And yes, oh, they, he's reading yes. out. And no. Nope. <laughs> That's a <Rip>. big nope. <laughs> he he oh, just my. got stuck on the building. <laughs> And then the building was like, I'm going to hand deliver oh this tasty locust, Yum, jet, locust? to the no enemy team. <laughs> Rest in peace. No. It's just, uh, yeah, unfortunately stuck on texture. Mm-hmm. Those are and some OP PGI features. On. With a 6-5 match. Oh no, this is not looking good they for... They do not have to deal with at this point. Yep. But it looks like the Annie has yeah, finally like got the there on Fira time, but... Just, uh, bad molding into Data this time. And they're just looks like the flea is uh, scouting them out. Free, it looks like. But, um, 
with the SBL setup, he has to danger go in fairly. Very now dangerous. he's getting really close, I would say, dangerously close. And uh, now, oh no! Ooh, okay. it looks like Aces Wild wants to push in on them, but pushing against the nanny, Orange is getting completely oh, no. this is not farmed by all. that LB40 nanny. And Orange is. Oh no. Yep, and he's lost and the he LB10 no torso at all. Them or Roger 3R. Oh no, this is not looking good for uh, Aces Wild. I know they did take the Locus uh, early. Oh. Neat. They, But mm -hmm. it looks like they are getting ahead in kills, technically. Even though they are, some of their mechs are completely sticked. Frio just killed the Vulcan, and there goes Orphanator in the LB30 Victor. It looks like health advantage is for Ace as well, just a slight advantage, but uh... Oh no! This is not looking good oh, at all! Oh, and the flea is legged! Now the air folk is firing on the Roughneck while the oh, Annie no. is just and sitting there! In Ready the to be killed. And seconds. Oh boy. That was a messy brawl attempt. The enemy has tapped enough resources. We failed. And unfortunately, this is four to yeah. one in Furio's favor. Even with the the, the magic OP PGI features. Delivering that tasty locust to Ace's Wow. <laughs> My goodness. One damage out that of That is rest quite a show there. But uh, surprisingly enough, uh, yeah. It seemed like uh, the Bushwhacker 2 is not performing at, at all for, uh, for Ace's Wow at this point. Yeah. Alright, mm -hmm. and we are going to be switching to Grimplexes for the final match. Right, trying to bring up. Picking. And let's take a look here from the damage numbers. Too many windows. Let's refresh that. And all right, here we go. And let's uh, take a look from uh, the winner side here. Uh, 3019 and that Annihilator 1X. Uh, 630 damage. General combo with the Vindicator at 1X. 540. Roughneck 1 Charlie that you are mentioning earlier, 519 damage, very good mech uh, damage there. And uh, the Assassin 21 mech, um, blend 398 damage, trebuchet 7 parry with 268 damage. And unfortunately pure sense was uh, pretty much... Uh, Locked out of that particular uh, damage pool there. And... 
<laughs> yeah, take me by Indeed. the hand for your amazing well, features on Solaris the City. Side. Wow, the Fleet 17 with the FTL setup did quite well for the team with 408 damage. Uh, the uh, Victor 9A1 with 409 damage. The Bushwhacker X1 with 412. And uh, the uh, Vulcan 5 Tango with 201. Bushwhacker uh, 87. And Orange Dry with uh, 197. Uh, 15 damage there. So significantly. But uh, that might have been accidental. I didn't see many strikes happening on data though. It seemed like uh, uh, Ace's Wild uh, Waffle House uh, didn't put strikes on them when uh, you know. Um, did you uh, notice that Texan uh, when they started to finally push? Uh, I just noticed that there wasn't many strikes on Theta once they actually started capping it. They could have fooled cap Theta for sure, yeah. which is what but, uh, I here think we go with the map strat. This wall could have done better. Oh, it looks like okay. the teams are ready. So we'll go over the map strats really quick, but we are launching. No, no, no. I just clicked on. Oh, it. Number. Did you just clear the map strats? Okay, I see it. Alright, so from team one side, Ace is wild. They didn't really see Furia going all the way to Kappa with their main death ball. And taking, once they saw them take that point, they just decided, let's take the two cap and we will rotate around the center. Try not to be on the inside. But the problem was, by the time when Furia basically took the cap. The, uh, they were trying to push at the Annihilator itself and with a lot of the higher LBX combos. From Furia's side, it was just very oh, right. difficult like, for Ace Looks Wild like the match to... is starting. Let's uh, switch the um, that that screens room. here. Do the actual game. All right. I'm looking at blue team. I'll handle red oh, team. and it looks like we have double annihilators here from Aces Wild. They're going out big and uh, loud. Two annihilators, three fleet 17. It's interesting. And a roughneck tree alpha. Hey, how about your side, Texan? Oh, we have some hard just pulse hmm. vomit. From Furia's side. Every mech has a pulse laser, guys. Large pulse, medium pulse. Gotta <laughs> make sure they taste all flavors of the laser vomit rainbow. Wow. It looks like Furia is taking Hamburger Hill on 3-cap uh, with like their uh, lighter mechs. Furia is aware of that situation. And... Looks like their Annihilator has, uh, oh, no, the Roughneck has reached Gamma. We have Gamma. Oh, mm -hmm. just, just realized those That's are LB40 uh, Annies for some reason on Grim Plexus. It's not a map that you run Brawl often on because it's so easy to pull to range, especially when people go on that 10 line. You're firing LBX at like 500 plus meters, even if you do take the shortest path available. Now, I don't quite understand what Furia is doing. They're just holding Hamburger Hill with Pulse Vomit. Oh, and now that they see someone, they're hmm. jumping off to Hamburger Hill and They've chasing after a fleas. Lucas, uh, towards Kappa. They just got their mechs clear from the vet, so obviously they're trying to make I sure they if, stay uh, clean the lights had, of those uh, any uh, good visual on the Hamburger Hill um, mechs here. 
I'm guessing so. Especially once they start getting shot at. Well, Especially uh, that flea that took 3% damage. 17 best interest to push 17? Kappa is under enemy control. Yeah, looks, looks like Furrier like realizes the, they uh, have to take oh, a two cap. Being, uh, next. They are 90 points behind. That might quite soon. Locus is still on um, Capo there. Wow, that's a oh, general combo is UAV. Uh, scouting out. Looks like Chimera might even get oh. spotted by it. He runs close yeah, enough spotted. to it. I think he ran close enough to it. And his uh, small lasers won't uh, beat out that MPL. Wolfhound. Oh no, he's not. I would say it depends on these hill inclines. If the the flea can mystically... Oh, the fleas are gathering my, my for... Uh, Shindiru right behind him or something. The gank. Oh wait. <laughs> Ooh, boy. The gank! General the Combo is regretting gank. his choices, perhaps. Oh, and he's down from... 98 to oh boy he's going so low oh no unbreakable oh he aged oh boy oh no, another flea. did uh, receive 40 <laughs> another flea yeah, just percent came damage in. from that oh from the strikes it was wow, that was that two was two, just a uh, single strike on him, and though. the max almost uh, down what Eh? Wait, that's illegal. What? Uh, anyways. Um. I don't know. <laughs> that much abuse from fleas, I guess. We will see what happens with the actual referees. Mm -hmm. See to that. We're just here to cast the match, guys. Yeah. And unfortunate that General got yeah, caught out like alone that. versus a wolf pack. But Furia still Indeed. has the cap advantage, but uh, they do have a bigger wolf is, pack. They have the bigger wolf pack. They might actually try for a cap uh, push, but it seemed like um, yeah. they're not properly scouting for the. Uh... Oh, wait. They might be just sending the one mech to uh, uh, Kappa at that point. Like they're sending um, Unbreakable over there. <laughs> They're sending them. He's already half, which by is the looks of it. a good idea. Yeah. And Furia is already in the commanding position. They're definitely over committing, probably. Once they see these are not LB40 Annies, will they fully and commit with the Pulse Bomb? It? That's also. Surprise an LBX, LBX range. from the Annihilator. Oh, and he uh, only does that on Pure Sense. Your sense is, uh... <laughs> and it looks like, uh... Oh, good sir, have a nice exact day. Oh! Your sense has relayed information. The Pulse Vomit Max are preparing for a push. They're willingly pushing against oh. this triple freaking LBX combo. Or actually, is that triple? No, that's an MPL Roughneck with only 6 MPL. Weirdo. Yeah. You can easily take it's like a strange, extra LPL with that. Oh. And strikes on oh, landing Bez on is the getting annihilators. Hit oh. Really hard actually. Oh no. He is CT. He's already open. lost the side torso. Yeah. Confirming that we have possession of Kappa. Now I these the oh, Annie no. and the Roughneck should have just pushed. I don't know why Orange Rye is just waiting here. It's tactic was demonstrated by JGX, but they just made sure they were actually fully exposing against the other mechs, but here he's got his low mount stuck. And... There goes Chimera. Oh no, it's just a shooting gallery down. for and 
orange dry. We have it looks orange like. dry and left. A completely fresh annihilator versus four people. Who will man. win? The orange people dry that managed to flank it from all sides. Back with one kill. We will back see. At uh, the area team. Now, oh, no. it looks like there's gonna be a... And... At least it a looks 2v1 like, uh, against Unbreakables the after flea, he dies. Nope. Uh, is, uh, I think it's a 3v1. Be mistake. Oh no. Yes, I think he should have him tried for the cat alone. win, but uh, it might have been too late. Oh! Rip on break holes. <laughs> the self mass destruction. He hmm. just couldn't believe in this carry Rip. power. I believed in you, little guy. Could have totally taken down two fresh pulse vomit max. Well, and, uh, the grasshopper. One grasshopper sure, that was badly uh, damaged. Yeah, that Roughly, was, right? um, really unfortunate. Um. It was uh, possibly maybe the cap strat, but uh, wasn't fast enough uh, to go for the cap. Let's take a look at drop five there. If you wanna throw it up there while I um, grab the uh, scores here, the lobby stats here. All right. Uh, yes, um... We'll try we to do interviews, the right? interviews, uh, if you can remind our uh, pilots here. And it looks like uh, they'll send their I... puke master. <laughs> okay. And uh, let's take a look at the uh, match score, damage scores here. Uh, from the Aces Wild side, we have Orange Dry with 614 damage from the Annihilator. Uh, and the Fleet 17, which uh, was one of the key roles there for taking out the Furious. Um, unfortunate Wolfhound, uh, 230 damage uh, from one of the Fleet 17. Another did a hundred seventy nine, and um, the Roughneck Tree A did two hundred thirty nine, and Fez twenty one was unfortunate enough to get caught out with his um, annihilator two hundred fifty five from that LBX uh, annihilator, and it's the annihilator with a. Uh, Less armor than the one alpha in the recollect. While looking at the. Um, oh, and uh, the Flea 17 with 11 damage uh, from Unbreakable. And looking on to Furious side here, we have um, Varel 29 with 347 damage. Uh, Pure Sense in the Locust, uh, 1 Echo, 200 damage. BZP, Grasshopper 5 Hotel with 327, uh, and 319 with um, 178 in that uh, Zeus 9S. The Wolverine, uh, Wolfhound, sorry, to, uh, with General Combo 184 and Brolook with. Yay. Right. Okay. It looks Let's, like uh, drag the in. interview people are ready. Hey guys! What do you reckon? 
fantastic match. Hello. Fantastic Hello. matches. Um, Howdy. it was a bit lopsided. Uh, I do have to admit, but uh, it was definitely a, a well fought uh match. Uh, I'd say. Um, let's uh maybe we'll proceed from drop five here. Uh, that last drop. Uh, what was the whole situation that uh, Fira was thinking initially about that particular um, positioning? Yeah, so idea behind drop 5 was just go to the center. So basically the, the easiest point to go anywhere and see what enemy is doing and react in the best way possible. So when we seen the, the cops coming in, we, we reacted by sending uh, light over there. When we seen uh, slower slower capping on Gamma, we mm -hmm. reacted by sending main force in that direction, etc. Right? So we didn't yeah, have like, and, some, uh, some special plan. It looks like to um, react. Um, for Aces Wild there, um, your fleas went for the Kappa point and scouted the, um, the enemies as well. What was going into through your minds when uh, they scouted out the um, information uh, that uh, you've received, perhaps? Or am I uh, incorrect in that assumption? Um, this is wild. Um, yeah, we, we, we took Kappa. We were hoping to catch a light there. And... Uh, when we found out they went kind of center, that was surprising. We expected them to go down the Fox 11 side, like most teams do. And so we were just we were hoping to sit on two caps until we could sit on one cap and then force a push. And they and, pushed uh, sooner than we expected. Did the uh, fleas pilots uh, let you know about their particular setup, or you weren't close enough to actually get that information? No, we had a we dropped a UAV at the Fox Ten ish on the on, on the northern side of that. Oh, okay. Wall, so and they was, walked uh, all under it, so we got to see what was coming. Uh, fell there from the fleet. That's fantastic. Um, so uh, as the whole situation started to develop, as uh, the main force of area moving. What's uh, Fox 10 there? Um, aside from knowing that half of their team is uh, just Flea 17s, what was going through your mind there, uh, General Combo? Uh, is that General Combo? Am I mis? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so at that point in time, we've seen two Fleas from them and we thought that they are going to play a cap game. So we had our flare went, uh, the, sorry, our light went to, to Kappa. Uh, in that drop, uh, we used the Locust. So our Locust went to Kappa and the, all the remaining force went in direction of Sigma to cut potential Flias moving to, to cap it, right? We thought it's a cap game, so we want to catch them off guard. We want to catch them in, in transit, if you will. So that was the idea. Uh, I was in Wolfhound. I was the, the fastest from this force. So I went a bit forward to, to scout ahead, basically. Yeah, I seen the flare on Foxtrot 10. Uh, I went <laughs> for it. Uh, like, what's the worst you can have? It, it, what, yeah. What's the worst can happen, right? You, you, you get the two Flias to fight you, right? So, so that was the idea. But then the third <laughs> game, I was like, oh, damn. I need to Alt, alt F4. <laughs> So that was quite a quite a nice fight, right? But after afterwards, afterwards we just pushed for the gamma to to cut off the the uh, point income. And uh, yeah, and the, it the, looked the, like the you you managed there. to half one of the fleas there with your strike. So it wasn't all uh, all in vain there <laughs> at that point. Yep, definitely did. And um, tried, of course, I tried my best. You're down at that point. 
were you advising your team to slowly approach Gamma? And um, what was the thing on that particular uh, situation as you approach Gamma? Okay. Actually, a bit opposite. opposite. Uh, not slow, go fast. Uh, we are down one player. It's a fast mech, so we will not be able to capitalize for the long game with three lights, right? They will be able to, to just run around the caps. So we wanted to push fast, catch them still on the field. Uh, and orange dry. And, uh, and yeah, uh, finish it as soon as possible. That India 8 situation. Uh, definitely uh, kind of uh, developed into a pretty nasty situation there uh, overall, but uh, what was the thinking behind that? Well, we were hoping to, to fight in the channels um, on the left side of India 8, and like he said, if they would have came slowly, I think we would have been ready for that push. But as it turned out, our fleas were out of position. And, uh, I mean, normally you want Annihilators front, but we wanted the fleas in disrupting so the Annihilators could do some work. But as you saw, the Annihilators and, and Roughneck uh, okay. went down so first, no and then the fleas got to there too maybe late. Uh, withdrawal to maybe the corner of closer to Hotel 8 or maybe perhaps in India 7-ish? Or that's just the pathway is not good at all. No, no, that was that was the idea. We were hoping to fight in that that canyon because it's pretty straightforward, and the annihilators would have some advantage there. But the that UAV I talked about earlier at the very edge of that UAV's range, we saw them, or I saw them turn right, and it, I, so I thought they might be going back to center again. Uh, so when we realized that they had come around that that right side, like directly into okay. Gamma, uh, it was kind of it was so, too late to reposition the annihilators. All right. Uh, is there any um, questions you have, Texan, for drop five? Uh, is this what? Why the LBX Annie's uh, pilot preference or? Um, I just decided annihilators, and we we talked about what to take on them right up to match time, and we just kind of decided LB tens in case in case we had to trade at longer range. We figured the LB ten would be the best choice. Okay, just kind of curious because we've seen this track come out of JGX and against the EMP match. Yeah, they took UX. Five yeah, A's, three five UX fives. Well, they took and three tens and two fives on one, and they took five UX fives on the other. Yeah, I think those are a little bit better for. I would ag I would agree, but at our pilot level, I'm not necessarily sure. Like, we can't trade at the ranges that GGX and EMP can. So I think okay, I, we, we were fair. we were altering it to our ability a little bit. Plus, I mean. I think EMP had, or I think GGX had a really good read yeah, on it. Just kind of curious because usually the UX at those ranges would have been better. Just, oh, just saying. Yeah, I, okay. I, I agree at so this point. So on drop uh, <laughs> four there uh, with Solar City. Um, what was the um, situation uh, on your end? Uh, uh, Waffle House or uh, Orange Dry. Uh, as you were down, um, of course, the previous match before with the Solaris drop, you had some intel, um, possibly some um, idea what um, uh, Fiora was going to bring. Uh, what do you? Um, what was going into your minds then? At uh, drop, no, uh, uh at what, drop, at what um, part? like the uh, whole match, or sorry, drop four, yes, yeah, going backwards, so it's four, yeah, we're going backwards, yes, 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 yeah, I, oh, hello, oh, my computer just tried to <laughs> shut down, um, 
<laughs> a lot of lot of technical issues tonight. That's quite unfortunate. Yeah, that was obnoxious. Um, so I don't know. We had I, I noticed they had a jump jet locus at the beginning there on our screen. He was bouncing up and down from the top of a building to the bottom of the building. That was and a nice when he gimmick. finally landed, we just kind of nerfed him. Um, I don't know. They went they went into the center, and and we were kind of hoping to 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 kind of catch them in there. But the annihilator, and I think vindicator, you know, annihilator and a roughneck. They they pushed out quick enough where we weren't able to receive oh, okay. them correctly. So and at that um, point, it was just bad target calling on my part. There wasn't any uh, like uh, ID like uh, maybe. Uh, Thinking of bringing more strikes or leaving your second uh, strike uh, available for possibly a push through data from the enemy because it seemed like uh, you were mostly out at the outskirts after taking data and epsilon. Am I incorrect in that assumption or? Uh, that maybe you would uh, bring more strikes what, perhaps what was the assumption? to uh, land on data. Oh okay. I I brought and dropped one. I didn't. We don't. Oh okay. It I don't know like, if the rest uh, of the team didn't drop strikes. I, I didn't when, notice. Uh, the situation developed where Frio was just full on data and just sitting there for possibly about forty seconds there before moving on. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Drop, drop four. four. No four, I think. You were talking about drop four. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I dropped a, a strike on it, and then they pushed with the Annihilator and Roughneck, and there's a road over it, so I'm not sure. If you're talking about the channel out of Theta, I, I don't think a strike would have been too and, great there. Uh, question but when they were sitting on Theta, combo, sure. What was your thinking with uh, the, the left side push there uh, from uh, Bravo and Charlie? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So generally, even though you start on this map on north and south, right, uh, how the points uh, are uh, uh, localized, it's the, the, the map, the fight is usually going from east to west or west to east, right? So it's much easier to go for the point on the edge of the map and then just go across all the points, plow your enemies, plot the points or whatever, right? That's the like high level plan rather than go straight from the mm -hmm. um, straight from the spawn to like middle point or, or a few points, right? That that's like most safe. Uh, it's it's optimizing time, I believe, and, and that's that's mm -hmm. the thinking initially to go for the cap or epsilon depending on the drop, right? Because the previous one we went for F. So, so that was the, the general idea, uh, but uh, yeah, Locust, pretty fast mech, went to scout. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> the texture uh, is, is too strong. Uh, I believe it may be some, some ninja <laughs> patch yesterday or something like that. Like they, they put some hidden building or whatever because yeah, yeah. our Locust just got evaporated in, into the oblivion. Uh, with the textures and then by, by enemy guns. So that was something unfortunate, but there is one good thing out of it. Even though we lost fast as mech, even we lost a very good player, he dropped perfect UAV and um, fortunately either enemy haven't seen us or, or uh, haven't seen it or, or didn't have the uh, range uh, or, or just uh, couldn't go high enough with their guns to shoot it down, so we were able to see them for the whole duration mm. of the UAV with uh, with skills, etc. It was like pretty, pretty long time. So with this information, we immediately pushed from Kappa to Theta. Uh, we seen them rotating from north to, to, to east and to, to south, and we decided that, you know, half of them is like uh, going behind us, half of them is sticking around with, uh, with this uh, one light, uh, I believe it was Flare on, on north, so they were quite separated. So, you know, when you are all together on Theta and enemies separated at, at three entrances, but and you, do, you choose one and definitely uh, and finished that uh, whole situation quite uh, fast and neat there. Yeah, I mean, it was closer than you think. Like, I was, the flower was doing a very great job. 
like usually on, on mm -hmm. this competition level, etc., you, you take like zero armor on back or, or something close. Uh, so yeah, she Fla so, opened me, Fla opened also one more mech on Yeah, back so I was team, wondering team why heavily. the locust this so, time instead quite of dangerous. the flea. Um I mean they're both the same tarnish, that's and I haven't seen you use the flea this round at all, I think. Yeah, so this is like ah. uh, a bit to to mech, uh, mech preference, I would say, for the player or or whoever we wanted to put. Like uh, some players feel better on Flia, some players feel feel better on other light mechs. So uh, this time Brokulek uh, didn't play on the Flia, right? Like he usually when when it comes to him on light, it's it's usually Flia or Commando. Uh, he wasn't playing this uh, this light mechs right now, so other player wanted to go with with this one. Which is actually quite powerful. Mm -hmm. with, uh, so uh, if he was running like I, six, I, uh, I'm gathering that you had really good intel on um, Aces Wild uh, Waffle House. Uh, what would you say would have been a better uh, strategizing for them in the sense that uh, to uh, monopolize that one uh, mech advantage? Uh, if uh, I mean, in your standpoint, because yeah, it seemed like uh, that was a good uh, lead there for a bit, and then uh, for some reason it just developed into um almost a uh 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 quite a complex situation in the end. I mean, it's super hard to answer that question. Like, there is never the best option, right? Uh, like, from one point, Flea did very good job in opening our backs, and we had to turn around a few times, mm -hmm. etc. Right? But from other end, you could try to go for caps and so on, right? This is small map, so maybe the cap game wouldn't be the best idea. So I think this decision was the most optimal, for example. But then. Uh, flanking us around, right? They could, uh, if if they would have more vision, more uh, maybe Flea could drop some some UAV in the middle and then back out to the north. They would see all of us coming into the middle. Then maybe instead of um, pushing to the south with this mech and splitting your team, maybe they mm -hmm. could like turn around because at that point we we lost the vision of them. The UAV burnt out, right? So maybe they could like turn around and try to anticipate yeah. our push and catch us from the both sides of the entrance, right? Or something like that. Or maybe they could, with this with this force defending this entrance, they could yep. back out, hide more because they were um, picking out, dealing some damage here and there. Maybe wait for the flank to to move faster, right? And, and then only uh, go all on us, right? So I'm not expert, and I don't believe there is the, the best way. That I don't, is uh, true. Know what that exactly is true. Every minute um, running, okay. So it's, it's now I'm just push. looking back at um, drop tree, the first Solaris drop. Um, Orange try. Uh, what was uh, the um, initial thinking after um, after the canyon drops? There, your brawl uh, situation seems to be definitely much higher than anticipated, but it kind of fell short uh, in the canyon drops. Uh, what was uh, your thinking with uh, your, um, let's say, your Marauder, uh, Dree Roger there? Uh, that's a very uh, uncommon mech I've uh, seen in this tournament. Um, uh, so far, so... Uh... Orange Dry? Oh, I was. I just noticed um, your Marauder Tree. What's the question? Um, with the rest of your pilots at the um, drop tree. Uh, what was the um, thinking behind uh, your mechs there? Um, are you asking if I think the Marauder is a 
an odd mech to take. Oh, there. what was your your plan with your set of mechs? Oh, um, well, I would, the idea was to sort of tank a little bit with the Marauder and and try to get some good DPS out of oh, it. Okay. Uh, for the Victor, and we we just we we got outplayed real hard tonight. I'm mm. not sure that. The, and, the uh, Texan, we do you have any questions as point. well in uh, the Solaris, Solaris drops? Well, it's not exactly related to the match, but I have a general for you, combo general. Yep. Do do you have like a, a clip from Puro's angle, possibly of how he <laughs> reacted when he got sucked into that map PGI vortex? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm streaming, so I, I should have uh, the team speak <laughs> comment comment somewhere, somewhere, somewhere that I, I will. Upload. All right, that, that, this is what I ask. I want to see that later, possibly. Okay. Someday. Um. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's go to drop two on the Canyon Network. There. Um. Unfortunately, um, Texan did not use it. Well. He is drop one. Yeah, you instead of uh, switching from drop one to drop two, what? you just the use match reuse chat? drop one. So I can only see drop two's uh, stats there or strats. Okay. I I remember perfectly the, um, the, the okay. strategy of drop one. Yeah, drop two. So uh, that was the crab like drop, drop uh, <laughs> that happened. Um, what was the thinking there? Uh, orange dry. I'm really interested. Uh, we had success with crabs in the past, and we were hoping to. Uh, we expected them to brawl Epsilon because that's what they've done in the past five weeks in general, with the exception of a mm -hmm. annihilator catapult. Uh, like LRM type play, they mostly brawled Epsi. So we were sort of expecting that both games, and they played range on the first one, and we got strung out there. And then on the second one, they went mid. And again, assuming that they were going to brawl, we were hoping to get legs. So the call was sort of still legs when we were coming up the ramp, and that was my bad. Yeah. Um, when we got up there, we couldn't hit legs, and we just kind of got rolled at the top. Mm -hmm. So. Like I said, both both decks were designed to to fight their brawl, which is what we yeah, were hoping, it's... and we thought that, that they'd be fun brawls. But we just got ranged both times. Yeah, so. the, it it might have been whatever. Uh, we thought the jump crab might be fun. Better on, in on a sense Canyon. to maybe had your other crabs to be jump crab. It seemed like uh you had a twenty seven and a twenty seven Bravo, as I recollect from that match. And was there uh, a reason why those uh, two different variants? Or was it just pilots didn't have that uh, the jump crab? Which oh, we we had we had a sub tonight, and it's also oh. like two a.m. So we it was hard for us to to set something up. Um, I mean that that's oh, okay. that's an excuse. We should have all had jump um, crabs. I agree. So no, we didn't. Like so we just played with what we had. Vulcan, have you used that yet? Uh, in in all, was well, I believe you used some, but did you use up all your Vulcans at that point? Oh, okay. So you could only replace one of the crabs. We used uh, four for Vulcans that. tonight. Yeah, that might have gave you a little bit of a um, advantage uh, for just pushing into Theta, messing up their range, and yeah, that was. Mm. I no? don't okay. really think that had been the appropriate role, to be yeah. honest. No. Initially, we had three Vulcans mm. in the first drop, but uh, Kawhi ah, okay. likes the Cicada. That's his favorite mech, so we <laughs> let him take a Cicada. So that was our fifth Vulcan. Yes, too many Cicadas, dude. Oh, man. I, I, I'll i just reiterate again. I don't oh, think okay. the mech choices would have changed and these general loadouts. Combo, you uh, got played real hard. What was... Uh... The whole situation for you thinking of uh, drop two when you were pushing from uh, both uh, well actually you redirected to the left side instead of pushing towards Epsilon yeah 
Yeah. Uh, mm. So uh, today we had our optimal squad. I will. I would say uh, we had f- f- we had Freo who was uh, who was leading. Like he's the the most experienced uh, in-game leader. Also, we we prepared uh, good enough uh, beforehand. So um, you know, you, you always should try mm-hmm. to change something. Never go exactly the same next, exactly the same strat, right? So. Mm-hmm. Match one, like we did brawl, like everyone would expect. Uh, so for match two, we totally changed it. Even though we took the the close quarter max, we have decided to go to the middle and uh, mm-hmm. wait for our enemy to react, like again for us, for our pressure, right? When you expect enemy to go to this um, to this uh, epsilon point and you you cut the map in half on Theta, you still have option to go to Kappa pretty safely with one mech. If if they would like camp and try to you know if it would be a stalemate with, uh, with mm-hmm. one point uh, captured each, we we still would have the the safe uh, kappa uh, option. But then if enemy would push right, this would have to be like very coordinated strike because we have the defensive positions. Uh, we can catch them. We can just focus fire properly. Right? They have to jump down. They have to jump ha- uh, up. There are some some problems for for enemy team pushing uh, from from epsilon. And that's what happened, uh, actually, right? With 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 uh, help from from bit of luck that that you didn't had uh, jump jump jets on on crabs, uh, for sure that that helped uh, a lot. Uh, we we were trading some some fire when we were on the ridge, but when you jumped down, you you tried to to go as fast mm-hmm. as possible to the ramp to to go to our level, which is like the the best decision. But then uh, we had we had the upper upper position. We just picked here and there. Uh, scratched a few crabs, so so before you, before enemy team went to the ramp and to the top, like for sure they were uh, they they lost quite quite a lot of uh, of percentage there. So then it was just uh, easy, maybe not easy because still, yeah, you know, you never know what what's going on, what what can happen, right? Uh, so so for sure you you put up a good fight there with what you what you had, but uh, considering the percentage, like it was for sure. Much easier than if we would just mm-hmm. hold to Epsilon and had to deal with the, the rush, which can be pretty intimidating. Uh, Texan, do you have any questions uh, for our uh, team leads here? Uh, I, I guess for various side, uh, since they were using dual heavy gas victors and just a, a lot of other skirmishy and brawly type mediums, did y'all have any type of backup plan if they went for range possibly on this map? Since y'all showed them how to play a range strat as well in the match previous to this one? Mm, yeah, so so the thinking uh, if they would have the long range, the thinking uh, behind behind going to Theta is that you have pretty high um, hills mm-hmm. there and, and quite wide. So you can hide quite quite a lot of mechs there, right? Then you have basically the low ground everywhere around you, right? Except these two ramps, you can jump down everywhere you want, right? So you can rotate back and go to another point. You can rotate uh, front, right, to front towards enemy. So just jump down, get some cover there, uh, leave few few enemies, uh, sorry, leave a few few mechs to just cover and and send like a four man assault squad or something like that forward, right, to deal with the lorms or or anything like that. So. I would say that going middle is uh, mm-hmm. um, the, the safest option in that way, right? Unless, you know, everyone just goes to Epsi and, and browse, browse. Yeah, and browse definitely and you were able to utilize uh, uh, your mid-range uh, uh, MRM-40 uh, Vindicators, as I recollect. <laughs> and, uh, wow, that was uh, that's uh, quite a surprising uh, use of that yeah. particular... M- um, weapon system <laughs> and uh and yeah uh it's just uh Thanks. it's a bunch of interesting things uh from uh Fieria and um uh, uh strong get uh, it a little a little bit of a fell short situation for the waffle house uh, aces wild team but um i think if they had um jump more of the max jump capable they would have been able to cut through um that that uh that line here and just riot 
get the the data had a better chance to instead of doing kind of like what you see in uh quick play you see the the rotato uh action in that situation which uh finally strung out the uh crabs but uh yeah <laughs> and Yeah, like you, you could you could easily compare it to like uh, first world war, the trench warfare, when you have uh, this one kilometer of uh, problems in front of the pushing uh, pushing side, mm -hmm. right? So so that was this big trench, and with our jump jets, that that's how it, it felt. By the way, I have sent the the clip uh, from what we were talking about. I have sent the clip on the the bar. And on finally the last, right. but the, not least, uh, the first opening act of the Annihilator 2 from uh, Furia side. Oh, what was uh, that uh, situation that uh, you were planning on with uh, the Junkyard Annihilator uh, drop there? All right, go ahead. Yeah, so... Mm -hmm. So the the annihilator with with the, like a lot of AC twos is like the the the, the pick we we do quite often <laughs> I guess because Freo is is loving that mech he's like he's born in that mech I would say he, he he performs really well he enjoys it very much so mm. that's always a very good investment to to put a good player in a in a mech he loves so idea idea behind uh, this first drop was to play a little bit behind the annihilator with the tactics therefore uh, me in bushwalker uh, i was like sticking close to him for any push purposes to, to defeat the the pesky lights and, and etc also to adjust for the high range of of the this loadout we choose to stick to the north wall of the map uh, so myself and and, uh, and freo we were like just right right uh, near the, the the edge of the map to to utilize the range while remaining of the team was was moving closer by to to create this chaos create this mech uh, create this mess so so you your usual brawl uh, basically how how the fight goes right and uh, that happened right so so enemy dropped uh, very very well like uh, you grouped very very nice and seeing this from this north position so from this like 200 or 300 meters away seeing all these mechs piling up on top on, on the heads basically of, of of our of our team all together in a one line like like a real one unit that was yeah. super super nice view uh, and then the brawl started right so with uh, myself and and Ferrell being uh, away we could uh, very very nicely target the, the backs of the mechs that were running around etc and and the, the focus fire i guess uh, from from this okay. mech uh, was was the, the game changer i think not to take out anything of course of our brawl team who who performed last as well pretty great i, I don't recall yeah. the image and uh, orange dry um, for sure they were what was uh when, when you were actually pushing up the delta five you were a bit uh stuck on uh cover right by the delta five uh mountain there um you definitely saw the annihilator at that point um what was the thinking in your minds at that point uh, what was the call uh we intended to hang out oh, on okay. the delta 5 corner and and stay low there expecting okay. expecting them to brawl push like they had the last several weeks and uh when it didn't come we we sort of stalled out um the vulcans were kind of jumping and, and checking shit out so we knew the annihilator was over there but i don't know we the, the strat yeah, had kind yeah, of failed um, us at that point so our only uh, option was to, like, to push uh, the stall was a really long time so it I mean, with your, I believe at that time you were running Victor uh, Ultra 20s and Ultra 10s, is it not? Uh, on that particular drop? The uh, 9 Alpha 1s. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. Um, I'll, 
Ultra, it, it, yeah, Ultra 20 like, and two uh, Ultra Almost tons. like uh, you almost have to push all at once so that you know the Annihilator might try to focus one down, but uh, you might have uh, pushed uh, their mechs uh, or at least got at the enemy hard enough, but uh, just uh, seemed like uh, they managed to single out uh, all your one one mech at a time at that point. Um, would you have uh, possibly considered um, Overwatch mechs, perhaps, on uh, the next time uh, you bring, uh, um, next time you encounter Canyon Network, or is there, um, are you going to keep trying the Brawl Strat, uh, maybe one or two Overwatch mechs? Uh, what do you think uh, in, in a possible... A really high possibility chance that someone will bring uh, Annihilator 2 uh, or just Annihilator in general and just bring AC2s to uh, shower down, ballistic ammo down. Okay. Um, yeah, yes, we considered taking Overwatch mechs. That was that we decided against it. Due to oh, their prior okay. play on Canyon, so I mean, dropping on the the bottom side, you have the advantage of, of the spine. So we could have taken range, which, in hindsight, yes, would have been ah. better. And, and yes, we did consider that. But like I said, we just we went brawl uh, because we were expecting to okay, to run into their uh, brawl right on Epsi. Excellent. Do you have any questions for uh, this final drop? Or... Okay. Uh, kinda. But it probably wouldn't have changed the results of the match. But maybe it could have made the the matchup a little bit closer. When y'all realized they had a lot of Overwatch max on top of D5 and you had Brawl max, do you possibly consider just backing off and letting them keep Epsi, but maybe throw your mechs onto a Kappa Theta strat and go down those valleys that provide a easier way for you to get into their range because they had set up a lot of their range at the junkyard. Um, y y yes, we, we kind of thought about that. Um, I think both teams had some information oh, yeah, going into that drop because of the crash on the first one. And so, I mean, we kind of knew that the Annihilator was there and I made the decision to, to stick with our strat because in the past they had taken an Annihilator and they kept, um, they went like the, the, the kind of second level towards the middle, like overwatching Theta. They didn't go the Charlie wall. So I, I mean, we were trying not to use information from that crash drop. So, I mean, I wanted to stick with the plan because I still thought they were coming MC and we didn't want to go into it being like, oh, well, they have an annihilator in junkyard. Let's just play around that. So we, we stuck to our, our plan. And I don't think that, I mean, we took brawl decks. So, so spreading out wouldn't necessarily have been better. I think they would have, I don't think it would have changed the match at all. I mean, yeah, I agree. It probably wouldn't have changed the map, but I was thinking maybe you consider doing that. That oh, could have right. made it closer, probably. It it could have. But yeah. uh, again, uh, thank it, you. Yeah, I don't think it would have. But for yeah, your time and efforts, uh, much appreciated. Is there any last words you would like to leave uh, for our viewers? Perhaps uh, any um, any <laughs> anything you would like to say for this uh, final round? Go ahead. Uh, ISC was a lot of fun, and I'm glad we made a team. We I, we made the team as kind of a last minute thing. We never practiced. <laughs> it was just kind of a for fun thing, and we did better than I thought we would. So we had good matches, and I mean, we got <laughs> outplayed hard tonight against Feria. I thought it would be closer, but so I'm I'm glad we got to and, uh, general combo, play against them though. You? They're a solid team. Yeah, from our end as well, it was uh, very 
good tournament. We had our ups, we had our downs. Uh, I would say <laughs> our downs was mostly to the yeah. 5 a.m. <laughs> playtime, but you know, excuses, excuses, right? Uh, thank you, thank you, Orange, for for put putting up um, good fights, uh, even though it might seem at some points uh, a stomp. But yeah, uh, uh, there were moments that for sure. There were actually quite a lot of moments when 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 it was quite scary and and quite problematic for us. So it wasn't that easy as as the viewers might think or or anyone who who just said that. Uh, thank you also for casting and for viewers. Thank you for watching. Indeed. Also remember there is a very good event going on. Grab your MCs, grab your <laughs> cash, <laughs> and enjoy the MWO. Oh, those ranges! My builds, goodness! Right? Yeah, because all and, those weapons. Uh, Artemis <laughs> missiles. Please, PGI. <laughs> did did you did. guys just shill the MWO event? <laughs> well, yeah, shut the up. Know, yeah. I think anyone watching comp knows that there is an event. <laughs> Thank you, once again. Yeah, no, All right, no. you guys have a good night. I'm going to sleep. <laughs> Understandable. Have a nice sleep. All right, bye. Players have so much uh, CBs, then they don't even take the effort to click redeem. Yeah. Much, uh, right? I'm going to do yeah, it I've on all my Yeah, i tracking so. the events. <laughs> Monker S. <laughs> all right. Thanks again, General Combo. Have a